Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. People are facing big challenges, we know that. But there is a main problem, a main difficulty that people are dealing with and it's the self-blame. People are criticizing themselves badly, being very, very hard on themselves and falling because of that to a lot of sadness and to many bad places. Now, the fact that it's not good, that it doesn't bring the person nowhere, that it doesn't help, that's obvious, everyone can see that. But, the main problem is that people falling in the trap of that kind of Yetzirah, to hate themselves and to blame themselves, while trying to serve the Creator. If just a regular person on the street, he's got complaints on himself, it's one thing. Because he's not claiming to do something special. Not that we don't want him to be healthy, happy or, 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 or strong or whatever we do. But the mistake is not as big and hard as the mistake of a person that claims to be a servant of the Creator. And why? Because when a person claims to serve Hashem, so he claims to be connected to the truth, or at least to try to express his inner will of trying to attach and connect himself to the truth, to the God of truth, to the Creator. Now, while blaming yourself and hating yourself and criticizing yourself, you're separating yourself from the truth and by that separating yourself from the Creator because when you're blaming yourself and following that kind of advice you are wrong and you're lying to yourself. That's why we're gonna try to understand tonight how come it's so wrong and what is so bad in it. We know that the Creator He gave us a holy soul and the holy soul that we received from heaven is a soul that is godly. And godliness is all pure and all good because it's the light of the Creator Himself. Now, to speak bad things and to think bad thoughts about His light, this is something that for sure we cannot do. Now, when we, as holy souls, finding ourselves falling and failing and making mistakes in our physical body, we must understand that the reason for those failures and those mistakes is not coming from the positive side, from the spiritual side of our souls. Those failures are coming from the physical side of our bodies, of the vehicles, of the prison of our souls. Now, when you judging yourself as a physical body, you're wrong. Because your body is your vehicle and it's not who you are. Who you are is the soul. And it's not that you have a soul. You are a soul. That's your real being, a soul. A spiritual soul. The neshama elokit that we have this is the essence of our being and that's who we really are. Now, when you judge a person by his shape, by his color, by his accent, you don't give him a chance. Why? Because you immediately judged him based on something that just helps him to travel, to walk, to communicate, and not by his deeds, not by his actions, not by his real being, who really he is. You're just judging him because of 
the community that he's part of, the religion that he's part of, and family that he's part of, but who that he is, you never checked. So for sure that no matter what you're going to say, if it will be bad about that person, it will be wrong because you're not aiming to the source of that person, to the real essence of that person. Who really he is, you don't know. You never met him. Because you stopped at his car, at his jacket, at the color of his face, the color of his eyes, or his accent. And you never felt him. You never met him, actually. Now when you're doing the same against yourself, and judging yourself based on your actions, on your failures, you never meet yourself, and you don't know who you are and you're wrong, and basically you are trapped in that trap of lie that the evil inclination put for you. And you misinterpret your actions, and by that losing your connection to the Creator. Now, the solution for that is to do tshuva. Now, what it means to do tshuva? I said it many times, but it's important to repeat. If now there's going to be a big rabbi that's going to give a lecture, and in his lecture he's going to say, Rabbi Isai, everyone needs to make tshuva. Thousands of people will hear that lecture. I'm asking you, how many of the people, everyone are willing to do whatever that rabbi will tell them? They all believe in him, they love him, they admire him, they want to follow his advice. Now he said, we all need to do tshuva. How many of those people will do tshuva? I think no one. Why? Because no one will even understand what it means to do tshuva. One will decide, you know what, I need to wake up earlier in the morning and to catch the earliest minyan. Second one will say, I must accept Shabbat earlier. The third one will say, I must keep all the Shulchan Aruch. Another one will say, I must learn more Torah. The third one will say, I hurt my wife. I need to apologize to everyone. will take something good out of that vote, out of those words that that rabbi said. But the rabbi said that we need to do tshuva. What does it mean to do tshuva? To do tshuva, it's not to keep Shabbat. To do tshuva, it's not to eat kasher. To do tshuva, it doesn't mean to go and apologize to someone. Those are other good things. Those are great things. To keep Shabbat, it's wonderful. To eat kasher, it's the best. To apologize if you hurt someone, or even to behave well or better, it's amazing. That's exactly what you need to do with your life. But it's not tshuva. Tshuva is a different obligation that got its own definition. What you need to do when you do tshuva. First of all, you need to remember the sin, the mistake itself. And then you need to feel regret on that sin. That's how the Rambam, the Rambam HaKadosh, he explained to us, Hilchot Tshuva la Rambam, explained to us how we should do Tshuva, what it means to do Tshuva, Hilchot Tshuva, the rules of Tshuva, by the Rambam, Rambam's explanation to do Tshuva. You need to remember the sin, and you need to feel regret on doing it. And then you need to go to a place that you will be able to speak to the Creator. Not in front of people, not in front of your rabbi, not in front of your wife, not in front of your best friend. Tshuva is you and Hashem. You want to apologize to your friend? That's great. It's another thing. It's not tshuva. You're not doing tshuva in front of your friend. You're apologizing to your friend. Great thing, but it's not tshuva. Tshuva is that you are coming back to Hashem. How you come back to Hashem? You need to take that feeling of regret and that it will carry you to a quiet place that you will find the ability, have the ability to speak to the Almighty and to stand in front of Him or to sit. It doesn't written how you should stand. But while standing alone in front of the Creator, what did you need to do? is to tell him exactly what that you've done. And you cannot complete your tshuva until you will confess. So if you did something wrong to your friend, let's say that you're working in sales and you saw an amazing deal and it was belonged to your friend and you made 
everything you could to take that deal from him and now you signed that deal behind his back and you know it and he, you may choose, will never gonna know that, no problems with him in this world but in the world to come we don't know what's gonna happen and also that the Creator is so kind and sweet that he for sure gonna wake up some judgments that we will do tshuva and come back to him also in this world. So now you know that you did something wrong signing that deal behind the back of your friend. What you need to do with that mistake? You need to take that feeling of regret to go to a quiet place and to confess first step with in front of the Creator. Tell him your heart. Listen Hashem, I had an issue, I didn't know how I'm finishing the month and suddenly I had that deal and I thought that it was mine and I had another thought that maybe I was wrong but in the end I was too weak and the evil inclination, the Yetzirah overpowered and tricked me and I failed and I'm sorry. I'm sorry I took that amount of money from my friend, I was not supposed to do that. Please give me the power not to do that again. Now you finish the spiritual part of your tshuva. First step of your tshuva in front of Hashem was that. Now I'm asking you, when that rabbi will speak in his lecture and going to tell everyone we must do tshuva, who going to go and do tshuva? Who going to go and keep mitzvah tshuva of the Rambam? Because if you're going to ask yourself, okay, you know what? I want to do tshuva. Let's start. So now you need to confess on all your mistakes and on all of your failures. That's a big, big mission, a big operation. How are you going to do that? You woke up in the morning and you didn't run to wash your hands in a cup, with a cup. Okay. And the cup was not Dalit Amot from your bed. And you touched your eye, and you touched your nose, and you touched your ear. And then when you said the brachot, you didn't brush your teeth before saying the brachot, if you said the brachot. On every mistake, on every failure, you have a conversation. You need to go to a quiet place, to stand in front of the king of all kings, and start opening your heart and telling, listen, that's not the way to wake up in the morning and I'm sorry. I didn't wash my hands, I didn't brush my mouth, I had my teeth, I didn't say the brachot with the right intention, I don't, I'm not even sure I said all the brachot. And, all, and you need to talk about those things. Now, it's, it's a project. It's a project. So, the main advice is that every person will find, at least for a beginning, a certain quiet time in his day. And in that time he will start his tshuva process. To start opening your heart in front of King of all Kings and start sharing and telling him your regret, your feelings, your heart. And when you will do that, something spiritual and beautiful and amazing will happen to you and it's well connected to what that I said before. You will stop blaming yourself. How come? What's the connection? When a person is sinning, what that he's creating by his sins and crimes are husks. And those husks are blocking the light of the Creator from him. When you're doing something wrong, you're giving strength and power to the physical aspect of this world instead of connecting yourself through faith and trust in the Creator to Him. Because in which you sinned, let's say in money, because you thought that money means something more than justice, more than loyalty, more than faith, your connection to Hashem. So you chose physicality over Hashem. So because of your free choice that chose money, you cannot see Hashem anymore because money is blocking the way. You looked at someone that you thought to yourself that she's a beautiful woman, even though that she was a ghost from hell that came to fail the person. Now you, as that person, failed in a woman in a bad eyesight so now you felt 
that was your thought, that was the reason for your failure, that you will find more satisfaction and joy and happiness and pleasure in the shape of a woman instead of the Creator, instead of faith, instead of learning Torah and holy issues of, to, to connect you to the Creator. Now you found yourself choosing something physical over Hashem. So you now, as a result of your free choice that failed in lust or desire of all options of physical world, you, by doing that, blocked the light of the Creator from yourself and you cannot see Him. Now when you don't see Him, so the darkness got more control on you. If you put some physical thing in front of the light, and now the light cannot illuminate through that thing because of its thickness, because of its shape and weight and size and colors, physical aspect of it. You cannot see the light, and this is an obstacle for you. And you have that obstacle in your life until you will remove it. How you will remove it? When you will do tshuva. Now, when you are not removing those obstacles, when you're not doing tshuva, you finding yourself falling and failing in those obstacles, in those traps that you put for yourself before. You sin one time with your friend in an issue that money is involved. Now you have that thing on your back, on your chest. Something is chasing you. Now, every time you will speak with that person, you will suspect because you will be um, uh, cautious. You need to check that he doesn't know. So you're going to fail in more things. He will ask you, hey, you remember that client? And you remember that client. That was exactly the client that you signed the deal with. But because you don't want even to discuss and you don't want him even to suspect, you'll tell him, which client? No, I don't know. Who are you talking? And he will tell you, that guy with a red cap, the, the guy with a, with a Porsche, that guy that lives in the other block. And no, who, who are you talking? And you're failing and falling in the trap of evil inclination to keep on lying. And one sin drags the next, and the next drags the third, and third brings you to the fourth, and you become a liar. And you are lying only because... You have not removed that obstacle from your way. How are you going to remove that obstacle from your way? By doing tshuva, by confessing to the Creator, expressing your heart, telling your feelings, and apologizing to Him, and asking from Him to give you power and strength to, to stand up back on your feet, never to fail in that thing anymore, not to be scared from the things that scared you and brought you to that failure, and what will happen as a result of you not doing tshuva. You will hate yourself, and you will blame yourself, because your life will look miserable. You're going to feel sorrow because you must lie to everyone and you must hide from everyone and you embarrass that people will see you and you don't know how to express yourself and you don't feel comfortable with yourself only because that you have not completed your tshuva. But when you will complete your tshuva or at least will start your real tshuva process, not becoming more religious, just confronting your fears and opening your heart and telling the truth to yourself and to the Creator, by that you will remove one obstacle after the next, one husk after the next, until the light of the Creator will shine upon you in a way that only joy and happiness and satisfaction will fill your being and will wrap you and surround you from outside. And you will feel Noam Hashem, the pleasant of Hashem, and only because of doing tshuva. Now, when a person is blaming himself, he is failing again. He is failing in that trap of the evil inclination to lose hope and to lose the connection with the Creator. Because the Creator is available in every moment of our life to help us to start a new page, 
to open the gates of tshuva for us. This is something that Hashem is willing to do. Now when a person will take that decision and will work on himself to become that real Baal Tshuva, to confess on his mistakes and to go to the Creator and to say the truth, Hashem, I'm weak. Hashem, I have issues. Hashem, I'm scared. Hashem, I don't have confidence in you. Hashem, I don't know how to, what to do. I have that issue and that issue. If you are not doing that, you live life of sorrow. And when you do that, you remove every stone and every, every weight from your chest and your life becomes better and better. And you become much more positive about yourself, judging yourself favorably, giving yourself a chance, and by that also giving the opportunity to other people to do tshuva and to come back to the Creator while learning from you. And you become a role model for them. They can look at you and to see exactly how a real believer acts. Because all the righteous people failed. All of them. Even Adam Arishon, the first man, the most holiest soul, he sinned. King David, he made a mistake. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, all of them, they made mistakes. And the Torah is rebuking them. The Torah is showing to us the failures of our ancestors. In the holy book Likutei Moran it's written that Moses failed five times in his lifetime in anger. He failed five times. He was upset five times. And he did tshuva. And they, those righteous people, they did tshuva. They did tshuva. They found an inner power to come back to Hashem. What is holding us back from that? From that joy, from that satisfaction of cleaning ourselves? Only, only, and only the sin of arrogance. Only the pride. Even in front of yourself. You feel that fear and you feel that shame that is so huge. Like, who are you that it's going to be so important if you're going to be ashamed? It's okay to be ashamed. If you messed up, it's the most noble thing in the world that you will come and admit and say, I was wrong. How pathetic and filthy it is when a person is sinning and doing something corrupt, something wrong, and justifying himself like he hasn't done anything in the world at all, nothing. Why can't you admit? Children are coming to their parents after 20 years trying to talk to them. Something happened between us, but you hurt me. No, don't talk to me like that. You look at that parent and you don't know what to do with him. It's not a, it, like, what's going on with you? Can't you say I'm sorry? Can't you say I love you? Can't you apologize? Can't, what's the problem? You're losing your humanity. You're losing your touch, your, your sensitivity. You're losing all the qualities of your soul when you are chasing after your own honor while blaming other people for your own failures. That's such a low level of a human being, of a person. And we cannot allow ourselves to, to act like that. We must do whatever we can to reveal the light of the Creator. Now, which gift is greater than that gift of tshuva that the Creator gave us. That it's written that Am Israel cannot be redeemed through nothing else except of tshuva. And when they are doing tshuva, immediately they're being redeemed. The only thing that Hashem is waiting for us to do is tshuva. Now like we said, tshuva is not to wake up earlier in the morning. Tshuva is not to, to wash your hands with a cup and that the water will be covered. Those are different obligations, different mitzvot from the Torah. You want to do it? Great! You're obligated and you feel connected? Great! No one is stopping you from doing whatever you can. Do as much as you can. But tshuva, it's to come back to Hashem. What it means to come back to Hashem? To come back to Hashem is not to give power to the money. Not to give power to the grace and beauty of life. It's not to give power to, to, to physical aspects of life and to rise all the, the power and all the praises and all the joy and satisfaction to the King of all kings, to praise Him. 
To remember that He is the one that supports us, that He is the one that satisfies us, that He is that one that gives us wisdom and health and not the doctors and not the teachers and even not the rabbis. You need to have gratitude. You need to respect everyone, but because that they are all outfits and coverings of the Creator Himself. So as a person with the way of the land, with Derech Eretz, that knows how to behave, you have respect to every particle of the creation and you respect all human beings with no connection if they are rabbis or if they're not, if they're Jewish or if they're not, if it's a man or if it's a woman, if he's wealthy, if it's... You're just a respectful person that respects everyone, respects animals, respects nature, Respect pe everyone. You care about everyone. You care about people's cars. You care about people's properties because it's theirs. And you respect the creation that the Creator created. And you, as a person that goes to respect the Creator, that cares about the name of Hashem, that wants Hashem to be happy and satisfied and, 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 and glad with His children and, 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 and proud of us, you go and acting nicely. You go and, and behaving nice. And that's the real mission of us, to go and to spread the light of the Creator in the world in a positive way. When we're saying that Hashem mekabetz nidchei amo Yisrael, He gathers all the people that have been rejected and He's collecting them and bringing them all together, that there will be no one left behind the first letters of Mekabetz Nidchei Amo Yisrael builds the word Naomi. Naomi, she is the woman that was the role model for Ruta Moavia to convert because she was such a nice woman, such a nice lady. She was so polite and so good and so kind that when Ruth, that she was Moavia, saw her, she saw Naomi, that she's such an amazing woman, she said to herself, I must follow her. And she was the daughter of the king over there in Moab, and she dropped her kingship, she dropped all of her connection to royalty, and she followed Naomi. And she followed Naomi and she said to Naomi, no matter where you will go, I'll follow you. Your God is my God. Your religion is my religion. Only because Naomi was so pleasant. Like the meaning of the word Naomi. Naomi comes, the word Naomi, the name Naomi is coming from the word Noam. Noam is pleasant. It's joy. It's satisfaction. It's an aspect of pleasure. And that is the way to bring people to convert, to wake up the souls of those ones that have been rejected, to bring them back to Hashem by showing them the pleasant of Hashem, showing to them how joyful it is to serve and to be Jewish, not by rebuking, not by judging, not by criticizing everyone and having opinions and, 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 and slaughtering and blamings. You cannot bring people to the truth while executing them and blaming them and judging them and being hard on them. They won't find the power and the energy to come. And also us, all the people that have been educated in religious education or grew up in religious houses or found Hashem and tried to learn, we saw what was bringing us closer to Hashem and what rejected us. The rebukes and the shames and the insulting is never built us never gave us no inspiration and no power to do more in Avodat Hashem, try to serve Hashem. The opposite, it rejected us, it broke our spirits, it rejected and pushed us to, to despair and to sadness, to lose the essence of our lives, to lose the happiness and the joy, Chedvata Mitzvot, the satisfaction and, and pleasure of keeping Torah Mitzvot. It been destroyed for us. So if it's been destroyed for us, we're not allowed to destroy it to others. We must represent the Creator by His guiding lines, by His holy desire, that we're all going to be friends of each other, 
that we're all going to appreciate and love and respect and honor each other, going to show His generosity and His kindness and His love, acting in His good attributes. Become like Him as much as you can to show and to shine the light of our holy souls that are shining from within. So we must stop criticizing ourselves because while criticizing ourselves and being judgmental, we are destroying the world. We're destroying our beloved ones because as long as you're hard on yourself, you won't find the ability to judge other people favorably. It's not an option. If you hate yourself, you're going to hate people. The verse is saying, You should love your friend like you love yourself. Why? Because you're not able to love him when you hate yourself. You should love him as much as you love yourself. So now if you hate yourself, you can't love him. You hate him. He's the one to blame. Why? Because you suffer. But if you will work on yourself to recognize the good inside of yourself, to find the real you, to find the positive and innocent light of your soul, that sweet, adorable child of yours, who that you are, and to let it shine, to let it be, to express it, to let him feel, to let yourself feel, to let yourself be that naive kid that you are, being friendly and smiling to people and, 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 and looking for reasons to, to be glad and happy and, 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 and just wanting to be good. That's who we really are. Now, because that we've been hurt so many times, been insulted, been judged, been criticized so many times, we lost track to our real being. And today we don't know who we are. You look at the mirror and you think to yourself, oh, you're such a failure, oh, you're such a de de destruction, you're such a w worthless, you're so poor, you're so ugly, you're, you're stupid, you're dumb. You're... Every moment you make up another Lashon Ara, bad thing about yourself, bad comment about yourself, and all of those, all of those things are lies. You're talking about the creation of Hashem. So what in the world do you think to yourself? Who can you, who are you that you think that you can judge? Can you say on the art of the Creator that it's ugly, that it's stupid, that it's pathetic, that it's worthless? You are a creation of the Creator exactly like that I am. If you're going to go and start talking Lashon Ara about me, it will be a lie. I didn't do anything bad to you. What do you want from me? That you're going to go and, and open your filthy mouth on me. I haven't done anything. And I'm telling you that exactly from the opposite angle, if I'm going to open my mouth and, and, and say horrible things about you, I'm going to be as evil. I'm going to be as liar. It won't be the truth. Because you're a handmaid of the Creator. He's got His seal on your head. Your soul is a godly soul. If I accept it and if I don't, if I see it and if I don't, if I want to accept it and if I don't, who cares about me when Hashem made you? Now, if I cannot say anything bad about you because you're a handmaid of Hashem, exactly like that you cannot go and open your mouth about me because I'm a creation of Hashem. I didn't do anything bad to you that you're going to warn other people. for. We're not talking about an evil person that person is a murderer. Okay, we need to stop him from killing. That's not Lashon Ara. But just to say on him, ah, lazy, ah, ugly, ah, this stupid, ah, worthless. That's Lashon Ara. Those are empty things that you might say on a third person. You're not allowed to do that. Because who you are to judge him and already coming to conclusion, finish dissecting him completely, measuring him, knowing that in the secret of his creation, he's a filthy human being. Who are you? Who you think you are to come with those lies? It's a lie. So you're not allowed to do that on him. And I'm not allowed to do it on you. So you cannot also do that on yourself. You're not allowed to. Because the truth is that you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. Do you know the potential of your soul? Do you know how important and great you are in the eyes of Hashem? 
Do you know how many righteous people are defending you in heaven and saying, No, I see His goodness. I see His greatness. I see qualities inside of Him. He's a real Baal Shuva. He's a holy person. He's an amazing soul. Do you know? Now when you are arguing with them, you're destroying all their work of judging you favorably and opening for you gates of Shuva. That grace will be on the scale for you to bring you closer to Hashem. And you by filthing your mouth, even on yourself, destroying all of their work for years of the, or on years. And the problem is that really you don't know who you are, so you're just making up nonsense on yourself. And you're separating by that criticism yourself from the Almighty. Because He really made you, and He really loves you, and He really choosing you to give you life on a daily basis, and He feeds you, and He dresses you, and He covers you, and He protects you from germs, and from viruses, and from all kinds of plagues and illnesses and weaknesses, and you're not starving, thank God. Most of us are overweight, and Hashem is nice. Most of us, I said. Some of us needs to eat. But most of us are overweight. And Hashem takes care of us. And we're sleeping, and we're eating, and we're talking, and we're complaining on our debts to a $1,000 iPhone. And everything is good. Baruch Hashem, thank God. Hashem is with us. So if Hashem is choosing you to spend time with you, to open your heart, and to open your mind, and to teach you some wisdom, and to guide you, and to connect you to righteous peoples, and, 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 and to give you many, many wonderful things and experiences in life. See so many sunsets and sunrises, and, and, and visiting in such beautiful places, visiting in the Holy Land. I've been to Jerusalem, I was standing in the Western Wall, I said Tikkun Klali, I said Tehillim, I did this, I did that. Amazing life experiences, wonderful things. That other people would envious at you, would jealous, would just want to replace with you. You think that you have issues. You know how other people are suffering. There are people that are in such horrible conditions, such, such horrible poverty and, 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 and weaknesses that, that cannot even be described in words. We're so lucky, every one of us. And I'm talking on everyone. Everyone are lucky. Because the Creator reveals His loving kindness on all of us in a way. And if He chose to reveal His loving kindness on you, who are you to cut that line? Who are you to contradict that wisdom of the Creator? So by being judgmental on yourself and blaming yourself, you are blocking yourself from coming back to the Creator. Because you are giving strength and power to the obstacles, that those are the sins, that those are the curtains that are blocking the light of the Creator from you. And by that you are strengthening them, stabilizing them, helping them to stand and to keep on blocking the light of the Creator that is the light of mercy, light of compassion, light of hope. So that's why we need to have at least Half an hour, 20 minutes, 15 minutes of an honest conversation with the Creator on daily basis in your backyard, in your front lawn, in your office, in your car while the air condition is on, alone in your room, under the blanket before you go to sleep. It doesn't matter. And in that quiet moment that you have, open your heart with honesty and just be sincere and say to Hashem I'm sorry can you help me I messed up today I did something wrong I apologize give me a hand give me strength I need help not to cheat my friends not to lie my parents not to betray my wife not to destroy my kids not to ruin my self-esteem I'm destroying myself Hashem Help me not to hurt myself, not to judge myself, not to hate myself for no reason. I'm blaming myself on being a vehicle when I'm a holy soul. I once touched while opened my door, the door of another person's car. And she came out of the car with such blessings to me. 
Like, I don't know what I've done. I didn't do anything to her cup. My door just touched her door. I can understand that, let's say for an example, we're talking about a very poor woman, that it was the first car of her life, and she bought that car after saving for years and years and whatever. Okay, I, I understand her attachment and her d desire to keep her car complete. I can understand it. But it's crazy. It doesn't say that it's not crazy. To be so attached to your car that if someone scratched your car, that's it! <laughs> it's just crazy. You're just sick. Oh, nothing happened. Really, to you, something happened to you? Nothing happened? So nothing happened. Really nothing happened. Now when you are attached to your body, to, to your physicality, you're just acting crazy. Because you are a soul. And as a soul, you must remember that you are a soul. Like that as a driver, you need to remember that you are the driver and not the vehicle, and not the car. You are the driver of your being and you're not your physicality. You're not your shape and you're not your weight and you're not your height and you're not your measurements and you're not your size and you're not your color and you are not fat. You have fat, but you're not fat. You also have fingernails, but you're not a fingernail. You're a soul. And as a soul, you need to be positive. You need to smile. You need to express the good that's been treasured by the Creator inside of you. And to go with that good and share it. Let other people accept themselves as well. Let other people learn from you how to find good inside of themselves. And to share that good. To allow yourself to use the gifts that have been given to you by the Creator. He gave you talents. He gave you abilities. He gave you power. You need to use that power for that noble purpose of making everyone know and aware to the existence of the Creator in their lives. And the Creator is a good God. He's a kind and merciful God. He's not a cruel leader with a leash. He's Father of mercy. He's kind and loving and generous and we must find that light inside of ourselves that we will be good um, messengers to share and spread that light to our beloved ones if you still cannot recognize the light of the Creator inside of you you cannot go and sell it to others only when you will find him within you will find the ability and the knowledge how to express it and how to share it and how to sell it and how to provide it to others. The mission starts with ourselves, that we will find Him inside of ourselves, that we will find compassion and love and patience inside of ourselves. Thank you very much. May the bless us all from heaven in much happiness that all of our prayers will be answered immediately that we will believe in the power of the Creator to make wonders in our lives, and that the Creator will blow the shofar to redeem us from all of our sins, that wonders will take place in our lives, miracles and complete salvation, complete redemption. Ba'agala, ubizman kariv, benamar, amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.